Sean here from Kayak Flyer, and we have the March edition of the Dooley Fly Fishing Fly Medic Box. Before we get started, I just want to go ahead and tell you, Nick Dooley does not sponsor the show. Nick Dooley does not give me anything for free. He has been a guest on the Kayak Flyer podcast. I like him a lot, and I really support what he's doing. And I've been doing this as a second beginner fly box I've had because we have so many people reach out that are new to fly fishing and new to fly tying. And so I've been buying these beginner fly boxes to do these videos to help you guys figure things out. Now, you're going to get inside that. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need the Kona. And it's the TND in size 8 hook that you can see right here. You're going to get... Some Cyclops bleed eye, bead eyes in black. They look more like a chrome, but they're the black and they're in the 3 16 Now, these can be a bugger to get on. So if you've got really strong thumbnails, you can mash down the barb, or you can always use a pair of needle nose pliers to mash that down, preferably the flat ones that don't have the grooves. Um, that's what I've been doing. My first thing I would do as a new fly tire when I got this I would take every hook out and put the beads on. It just reduces some frustration. You get it all done. All those hooks are on there, but those bigger bead eyes are well worth the frustration in the way this looks. So that being said, the other things you're going to get is some two millimeter lead wire. You're going to get some flexi legs. You're going to get some coffee and black variegated medium chenille. And you're going to get some Simperfly Simple Wax in 8 aught. Now, we're going to start this fly a little different than you might be useful used to. We're going to leave this bead in the very back. And we're going to wrap up right up here. And we're just going to lay down a little bit of a thread base. And I know a lot of guys like to rip their thread off. I never have been a fan of it, so I always use my scissors. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of our flexi legs... And I've found leaving these generous enough to trim with, it takes about one and a half of these to complete this fly. But you get more than you need. So you can always go back and get more hooks and beads and tie plenty of these. But if you're a new fly tier, if you're not very experienced or you haven't tied a stone fly like this, I would highly suggest that you just go ahead and get all those beads on there and take your time because you know what? Being frugal doesn't teach you anything when you don't learn the basics. Now, I make a little V with these, just like that. I tie them in. Now, one of the reasons why I'm going to leave these back like this, when I push them forward, I, want them to, I don't want them to go straight forward. I want them to go out. So if I've got them tied in back here, when I push that bead forward, they're going to splay out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Length even, that's going to be a lot of waste on there because I don't want these antennas that long. But that's okay because this is for somebody who's brand new. And now when I push that up, we can see that those are going to splay out relatively nicely. And if they don't splay out, what you can do is you can come up and you can build a thread dam and then go back over, come under and go back over. And that's going to force those legs to splay. So over behind the leg, up under the hook, over behind the leg, and then build that up. And now when you push it forward, make sure you've got it down straight to the sides, not on top. Now when you push it forward, they're going to splay out a little bit more. And if they go down, that's fine. If they don't quite splay out perfect on your first time, that's going to be fine too because these are going to, you can always correct them as you try it with your bead to get the way you want, but these are going to be in the water and these are going to see the current grab them and move them around and that movement is really what you're looking for. So I can slide those up and now I've got them splayed out. They're going to look nice. So once I have that done, I'm just going to simply whip finish. You can put a couple of half inches in there. You can go ahead and throw some glue in there. If you're not confident and you're finishing, go ahead and throw a couple of pieces, of, a couple of drops of Zappa Gap or whatever glue you prefer in that, and that will stick those down. I'm going to slice that off. 
and I'm going to run that bead up. And now I'm pretty happy with the splay I've got. If you don't get it the first time, don't worry, guys. We're all going to sit here and make these flies the best we can. And we've got 24 of them to learn on. And hey, if you got four or five of them that are bad, give them to your buddy. He'll sure be proud that you uh, gave him some flies and thought about them. Matter of fact, I keep an entire fly box here with all my rejects. I give those to my friends for Christmas. I say, hey, I got you guys some Christmas presents. They don't need to know that they're my rejected flies that I didn't want to fish because they was ugly. And yours don't have to either. Next, we're going to take the .02 lead wire. You can get lead-free wire depending on your state if that's what you need. I happen to like the way the lead wire fishes. Um, and on Dooley's Fly Fishing YouTube page, he says take about 10 wraps. My water is a little bit faster that I fish, so I'm going to take more than that. And that's simple preference. If you're fishing in still water, maybe you're fishing a pond, you can fish that, or a small lake, you can fish that a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to run that up just as far as I can. Now, I got my thread pretty far back, so it's not going to run all the way up into the bead like I would like for it to. But that's okay. Next time, I just won't bring my thread back so far. Now, again, you can super glue that. I know on his tutorial, Nick does super glue it at Dooley's Fly Fishing dot com Dooley's fly fishing on youtube and remember since you guys listen to the podcast and watch our youtube channel you can save 15 percent on anything at Dooley's fly fishing with promo code kayak now i've got my simper fly flat wax thread and six aught i'm using a right bobbin go back and listen to our podcast right bobbins man those guys are some stand up folks really good people and you can also get those right bobbins and save 15% promo code kayak at Dooley's Fly Shop. Like I said, Nick doesn't pay me anything. He needs to, but he doesn't. And that's okay with me because I really like to see people in the fishing industry that have a passion for it do really well. I'm just laying down my thread base up and over and in between that lead. We're going to cover it with chenille so it's not that big a deal. We're not too worried about it. Now I'm going to take a piece of that leg whoop, that I had left over. And now this is a trick that I like. You may not like it. I like to take that. I'm going to come right behind my thread. I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to make a V. And once I make that V, I'm going to pull it up here and I'm going to walk that bad boy down. And what that does is it keeps those legs on each side of that hook and I can lay them right down and then just like the antenna I'm going to come up and over and down and up and under and down and that's going to get me a nice spread on those back legs. They're going to be spread out and I can do that again if one doesn't take as well as I want to. Man it's just like painting. You can do whatever you want to. You just take a turn and if you don't like it you take another turn and if you realize that was a bad idea, you just back off of it. You are the artist in this event. Just take a turn, back off of it, and there you go. Now I can grab these again just to get them out of the way. I can figure out about how long I want them. I can just snip those off, and they're done. And that is really all there is to those back legs. Really some of the easiest ways to do that. Now, I'm going to take my chocolate or my yeah my coffee so chocolate my coffee and my black now i've already pinched it off but if you just take the end of that and you pinch it off you'll get down to that string in the middle of that chenille and all chenilles do that and you just lay that thread down and you wrap it up and we're going to wrap all the way up because we like i said i really enjoy using thread i love that that is the that is the titanium white of our Bob Ross fly right there. We are really going to use a lot of that and just wrap it down to build that body and make that taper. You can use a thicker thread if you want to make that taper a little bit easier. You don't have to. Some people might if they have it laying around. I'm going to run it up to right about the middle. Then I'm simply, I'm not going to use the rotary on my vise because I know a lot of you may not have rotary vices. 
Now, if you want to get more complex, you can bring this up in between those back legs and really splay them out. I'm going to bring that up. Now, I'm going to take one of the greatest things i found is this little D hickey called a vice pawn by Loon. And I can just, other than picking up hooks with it, I can just stick that right on top of my vice. And it works as a great material catcher. And pull that back. I'm going to grab me another silly leg because I've used my entire excuse me, my flexi leg, I've used my entire flexi leg, and it cut me off a new one. And now this is another trick that I like to use. I like to bring that up inside. Whoa, we got a text message. Somebody forgot to turn their phone off. We're going to go ahead and leave that in there because we all make mistakes, and that's all right. We just wrap that right in there, and again, behind and behind. Now, this is where the magic is going to happen, right here. We're going to run this the rest of the way up. Now, we take our material back, we take our chenille back, and we're going to hold those legs. And this gets a little complicated. You may want to have three hands for this. Have a kid that likes you at home instead of like me. I've got mean kids here at my house. They're sitting here watching me make this video instead of coming over here and helping me. Poor old dad with bad eyesight. They don't want to come over and help him. Then I'm going to take that one leg and I'm going to hold it back and I'm going to throw that other one over. And I'm going to splay those legs again with that chenille. And then I'm just going to finish wrapping it off. And that is all there is to it. Wrap that chenille until you're happy. Get it right up behind that head. Give it a nice big buggy body. This is going to be a stone fly. This is going to be for your big rainbows, your brown trouts, the ones that like to sit in the rocks for ambush or sit behind a log. That's for those big boys. This isn't any for, you know, those pebble, those pellet pigs that like to sit there and eat power bait all day. That's not what you're fishing for. You're going out there and you're going to catch your personal best on this fly. That's exactly what you're going to do. Once I have that wrapped down around the back, I'm going to come up front. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just gonna watch that I don't catch a leg and I'm just gonna snip that off clean I'm gonna grab these two legs I'm gonna pull them up to about where I want them to get them out of the way I'm just gonna snip those bad boys off they're sitting here they're facing almost a little forward almost a little back they're just right I'm gonna grab my whip finish tool I'm gonna whip finish this bad boy off and I'm gonna take big loops so that I don't catch those antenna I take big loops and I'm going to make sure I use my finger to clear that out. Big loops. Big loops. I'm going to be done with that. And bang. Once I cut my thread. Now, you have Pat's rubber leg stone fly. All you've got to do is trim it up. And you can trim that up to stone flies in your area. You can shorten those antennas a little bit. You can grab those legs, pull them up top, give them a cut, and you've got it right there. And this is a reactionary bite stone fly. It's a darker color. You can use it in darker water, deeper water. You can use this in whatever water you want. Guys, I'm Sean from Kayak Flyer. Check out the podcast if you haven't. We always have great giveaways on the podcast. Check out Dooley's Fly Fishing. Say 15%. Promo code KAYAK on any item you buy. And we will be back with another podcast. If you want to watch the podcast or on YouTube now, you can watch right below. We'll be back with another Fly Time video soon.